This is math lesson 2.2. In the next couple of days, we're going to be talking about adding and subtracting decimals. Make sure you have your notebook ready because you will need to take some notes. When we add, we have to follow certain rules for addition. And these are the first things that you're going to put down into your notebook. Now, since this is the first thing in your notebook, you should be opening up to the very first page. And every time we put something in there, there's going to be a title. So you've got rules for addition. That should be written on the top line in the title area of the page. Then you're going to write down each of these steps, one through five, copy them down. And I'm going to talk through them right now but you can be writing while I'm talking, but please make sure you're listening too. Step one, when you're adding, is to make a magnitude estimate of the problem in your head before you start. Now, a magnitude estimate is kind of a fancy name for one of those ballpark estimates. So you're gonna try to look at your problem and you're gonna round it to kind of friendlier numbers, or well, rounding to the nearest whole, um, picking things that work well in your head and you're going to get an estimate of kind of what ballpark should my answer be in when I'm done. Always get in the habit of making a magnitude estimate before you begin any problem. Step two is to line up your numbers so that each place value is lined up vertically which means up and down in a column. Vertical is up and down. Okay, So you're gonna have to make sure that you've got tens lined up, ones lined up, tenths lined up, whatever place values are in your number. And you know when you're adding with decimals that means that your decimal points are going to be lined up. So make sure you've got those decimal points in a line. Step three is begin with the smallest place value. So you're going to go to the very right side of the problem and add each column one by one. So step three is to add. We start on the right, we go column by column, and don't forget the rules for regrouping. Sometimes you'll need to regroup and carry a number up to the top of the next column. Step four, be sure to insert commas and or the decimal point where needed, especially when you're adding with decimals. That decimal point is crucial to getting the right answer. And you should know that when you're adding and you have decimals, your decimal points start lined up when you begin adding. And when you get your answer, that decimal point is still going to be lined up right with the others. So it's kind of like taking that decimal point and dropping it straight down. The last step, step five, is to check that your answer seems reasonable. This is also a step that should always be done no matter what kind of a problem you're answering especially if you're working with a story problem. You need to ask yourself, does this answer make sense? If I estimated that my answer would be um, 21, does an answer that's 20 point something seem to make sense? Sure it does, because it's in the ballpark of 21. Now, we're going to be doing a couple of example problems, and I want you to put those examples in your notebook as well. Right now, if you haven't finished copying down these steps yet, I want you to pause the video, finish making sure that you have everything copied down nicely and neatly in your notebook, then resume the video once you have it copied down. Let's take a look at our first example. We've got 3 and 5 tenths plus 4 and 7 tenths. Now my first step is to make an estimate of this. So I'm going to round to whole numbers because that's an easy way to make an estimate in my head. I've got to follow my rules for rounding. So 3 and 5 tenths would round up to 4 because anything 5 and higher tells me to round up. 4 and 7 tenths would round up to 5. So I'm thinking in my head, 4 plus 5 equals 9. So my answer should be somewhere in the ballpark of 9. Alright, step 2 is to line up your numbers 
so that each place value is lined up, sometimes you'll have to rewrite the problem. Other times it'll already be written for you, like in this case, but you still need to check. Is it lined up properly? Do I have my ones over my ones? My decimal points lined up? My tenths lined up? Absolutely. So here we're ready to begin adding. Step three, add away. We're going to start with the smallest place value, so on the right side, and add each column one by one. Now, five plus seven is 12, of course. So here's an example where I need to remember my rules for regrouping. I'm going to put the two down, and I'm going to carry the one ten up to the next column. Then I'm going to add my ones. One plus three plus four is eight. And the last step is to be sure you've got commas and decimal points where needed. Okay, here we've got our decimal point. It's aligned up with the others. This looks great. So my answer is eight and two tenths. Now the last step is for me to check to make sure that's reasonable. I estimated nine. Does eight and two tenths seem reasonable for that? You bet it does. It's in the ballpark of nine. Let's take a look at example number two. Again, make sure you're copying these into your notes. Okay, well step one, I need to make an estimate. Seven and nine tenths. I'm gonna round that to eight. Plus five and 74 thousandths. I'm gonna round that to five if I follow my rounding rules. Remember fifth graders, when you read numbers with decimals, I say and for the decimal point, and then I look at what I've got after the decimal point, and I say that number as if it were a number all by itself. So this is the number 74. So I say 5 and 74. And then I need to tack on the place value of my last digit. So my 4 is my last digit, and it is in the thousandths place. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So I read this number 5 and 74 thousandths. And rounding that to the nearest whole number is a 5. So I'm thinking 8 plus 5 equals 13. My answer should be somewhere in the ballpark of 13. Well, let's add it up. Second step, line up my numbers. Now, let's check. These are already lined up. Good way for me to see that is that my decimal points are right over the top of each other. Now you'll notice here I've got some blanks, okay, because I have my tenths lined up, but this number doesn't have any hundredths or thousandths. You know, it's a really good idea to use zeros as placeholders if this happens, especially when we get into subtracting. So let's get in the habit of using zeros to fill in those placeholders. Third step, add away. Go to the far right side, start adding your numbers. Zero plus four is 4, 0 plus 0, 0, 9 plus 2, going to need to regroup, put down the 1, carry the 1 up to the top, and 1 plus 7 plus 5, 13. Step 4, I want to make sure I've got my decimal point where I need it, dropping it straight down, excellent. So we got an answer of 13 and 104 thousandths. Does that answer make sense? We estimated 8 plus 5 is 13. Well, sure. This is definitely in the right ballpark. Okay, let's do one last problem. Now, I want you to solve this problem in your notes on your own. Okay, so follow the five steps. Go ahead and pause the video right now and solve the problem. Okay, so you've solved the problem, and hopefully you started by making a magnitude estimate. Now if I follow my rounding rules and round these to the nearest whole, I'm going to think 4 plus 3 equals 7. So my answer should be in the ballpark of 7. Next, I need to line my numbers up so that they're lined up properly. Hopefully you rewrote the problem in your notes. Okay, so I've got 4 and 465 thousandths, and I'm adding 2 and 54 hundredths to that. I need to make sure I've got each place value lined up. 
which means my decimals should be right over each other. Now, remember when I talked about having those empty places? This number doesn't have any thousandths, so we're going to use zeros as placeholders. Now it's time to solve. Okay, so hopefully you started with 5 plus 0, added these up. 5 plus 0 is 5. 6 plus 4 is 10. You need to regroup. 1 plus 4 plus 5 is 10 again. You need to regroup. 1 plus 4 plus 2 is 7. So when you get your answer, and I should also mention that you remember to put your decimal point in, dropping that decimal point straight down, okay, should be straight down below, your answer is 7 and 5 thousandths. Does that make sense? We estimated 4 plus 3 equals 7. Sure, that makes complete sense. All right, fifth graders, that's it for this lesson. Please make sure that you have the rules for addition and your example problems in your notes. And go ahead and continue on with your assignment sheet.